Hi friends, it's Amanda May with Earth Design. Welcome back to my channel. This is my 15th episode. Happy Halloween to all of those that celebrate Halloween. I have my 8-bit pixel art Halloween sweater on. It's not cross-stitch, but it is 8-bit and we all love pixels, don't we? <laughs> I want to thank all of you for coming back to my channel. I'm sorry about last week. I was a hot mess. I'm still a little bit congested, but I did go to the doctor. I spent the week, whew, I spent the week not feeling well, and I am on the mend, and I appreciate modern medicine. <laughs> this week, I want to show you my haul. I have some really awesome patterns that I want to show you for that uh, I, I have in my two-stitch pile. I have some Save the Stitches this week. We're going to do mail call. I got a little bit of mail and I'm going to do library books. I had a really cool, a couple really cool scores on the library book department. I love reading. So I'd love to show you those. They're, they are stitching related. We're going to close out the show with uh, the announcement of the giveaway winner for my banana pants purdy pattern. And I've got another giveaway that I'm doing, another pattern that, uh, y'all could have a chance to win. So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna do mail call first. And look at my cute little prop. It's not a bell. But I got my little mailbox. <laughs> it's a little things in life. It's a piggy bank. I don't have the key for it. But I love it. I got a really cool thing in the mail from an artist named Phoebe Wall. I ordered her tea towel calendar and I was so fortunate to get it the day she released it. I ordered it and it came in the mail and I wanted to all show you it. I First off, it came wrapped in this gorgeous tissue paper. Hello, artist goals. I need my own tissue paper. <laughs> I, I need my own acid-free archival designer tissue paper. I wonder if that's a thing. <laughs> Anywho, I loved the, the tissue paper and I'm going to show you the tea towel and I actually want to mount it and display it and I thought well how what's the best way to do it and I thought well I'll grab one of my canvases my blank canvases so I haven't stretched it yet but I wanted to show you I am so excited look at my new tea towel for 2019 it's not ironed yet. I I just I just put it against my uh, one of my blank canvases. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to align it, and I'm going to have it all ready to ring in the 2019 New Year with my with my tea towel mounted on canvas. And then once the year is over, I can add this into my kitchen rotation or maybe just use part of it in a quilt or something. And Phoebe just sure hit it out of the park this year with her art. That's my meal call. I want to show you now uh, my haul, H-A-U-L. I'm excited for these finds. I don't know when I'll stitch them, but I have them, you know, just in case. <laughs> With all of my free time, I have so many good things now to stitch. Here we go. The first one is a medieval angel stocking, and I just love it. It's got a castle and the tree, and it's got an angel at the bottom. It calls to stitch all of that in red, the background in red, but I think why not use just a red fabric and then just do the castle, the courtyard, and the tree, right? The next pattern is, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. It is huge though. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it is a sampler. And look at that. It is dated 1699 and it's a Dutch sampler and it's saying it's from a province in the north of Holland and it's a Parisian sampler and they're broader in width than in height 
and the large alphabets on these samplers typically have the letters surrounded in outline stitch in a different color with little circles or curly stitches as most Dutch samplers may contain a large amount of spot motifs often haphazardly placed. Ours has these as well as a scene along the bottom of a typical Dutch house of the period surrounded by trees, a man driving a cart and horse, a man on a ladder, as well as deer, storks, birds, and a windmill. I, if you want to look up and see, I really like the colors and I really like the sampler. Again, it's huge and it's gorgeous. I think Kitten Stitcher, Teresa, has really turned me on to the different types of samplers. And I have to say, I think I'm leaning more and more into the Dutch. I really, really like Dutch samplers. Who knew? <laughs> I have a really fun story about Holland. One of these days I'll have to tell you. <laughs> Nothing risque, just... Anyway. <laughs> All right, my next pattern that I wanted to show you is actually a pattern that a designer that Snug Harbor Crafts just featured in their floss tube video this week. Uh, Debbie went to Las Vegas and she saw one of these designs but this is by M Designs. It's the cherished tree ornament. I really liked it. I like the colors. It's uh, 68 stitches by 151 and it's on 30 count coconut macaroon linen. I'm like, coconut macaroon, hello, sign me up. And then the stitch is done in dinky dye silk, which I've never stitched with dinky dyes, but it's uh, mango tango silk. And I'm thinking, hello, I have, now I need this in my life because it's mango tango which makes me think of Odd Walla, Odd Walla Juice. I grew up in California in the Bay Area in the town where Odd Walla was founded before it was bought out by Pepsi, but that's a whole nother thing. But I love mangoes. I love Mango Tango. I love Odd Walla. I love this pattern. It's really fun. I have been doing, instead of the seven degrees or six degrees of Kevin Bacon, which is still valid in 2018, I say. It is still a valid. <laughs> oh, how Kevin Bacon has impacted my life. Okay. <laughs> uh, the stitching world, how everything is interconnected, how we're all connected is really exciting. I, I'm going to digress here for a second from my haul because this is, I have to say this. I got these two magazines and they're from 1996, 1997. And I'm thumbing through them. Okay, so the cat, I'm like, first of all, I'm like, Pam and Steph, hello, duh, right? But I'm, I'm thumbing through these patterns and I'm thinking of all of the stitchers that I see on Instagram, all the stitchers on Floss Tube, all my commenters, all everyone. I just, I'm literally going through the magazine going, I know who would stitch that. I know who would stitch that. <laughs> oh, so I wanted to show you, I, I don't know if I told you all that I like angels, but... So I saw this angel. I'm like, yes, that's going to be on my list to stitch. Okay, but this magazine from two, uh, 1996, and they say, you know, have it up until 1997. I literally went through this and took notes of every single pattern and who it reminded me of. So this is like shout out time right now. And then I like quasi flip through shout out time right now. <clears throat> All right, so... I think pretty much every, oh, I don't want to show anything. Pretty much the Santa, hello, everyone, stitching Santas. Then there was another angel in here. I really like this Christmas angel. It's by Joan Elliott. This is my huge shout out. Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching. Thank you so much for acknowledging me in your latest Floss 2 video. I watched it in its entirety, and um, an hour and 53 minutes into your video, you shouted me out. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support of Banana Pants Purdy. You all inspire me daily. And yes, I think about you guys. I think, think about you and go, wow, who would stitch that? Who would like that? Can't you just see stuff stitching that? I mean, come on, duh, right? 
And then in the back, they have a game board thing. And I'm like, of course, Pam, wouldn't Pam stitch that? This one, I thought Amy loves toads. Amy just she had finished that one, the Moth and Butterfly Sampler. Or... I'm going through this magazine. Every single pattern makes me think of somebody. The wreath, I love wreaths. Um, and the bo bird, I mean, put a bird on it. Who doesn't want to put a bird on it? Oh, here it is. These, I thought of Pam. Uh, it's the the coasters, but it you don't have to make them into coasters if you don't want to. And... Oh, okay. So I thought of Kef from Snug Harbor Crafts. I know she's a beginning stitcher. I'm, I consider myself a beginning stitcher. And I saw this and thought of her. It has a harp on it and she plays the harp and it has the mandolin. It has everything. And then I started thinking about Express Life Tiffa, who is fantastic. And she is a firm believer of make all of the things. <laughs> Misty Purcell you make all the things as well, and I admire everything that you do with weaving and quilting and, oh my goodness, make all the things. So I saw this wreath, and I thought of all of the tremendous people who are so musical, and so it's so much fun as a stitcher, as a designer, to look back through these patterns and think about the connection that we have as stitchers with other people. And all these patterns might not be your cup of tea, but you might know somebody in the community who does like them. And it's so much fun. I feel, I feel more connected. And these older magazines have meaning. Like, I see that person stitching that. Anywho, thank you for, for letting me go on. But anyway, look at what I have in my stash. A, a used magazine, and it's awesome. All right, back to my haul. And look, I get so excited. I just start... Oh, I start gushing. Excuse me. It is so cold outside. They said it was going to be warmer. <laughs> no. All right. The next one is this magazine here. And it's, uh, I, I marked, I actually marked one of the pages. I really liked the Santa. It is the antique Santa. I like the snow in the trees and I just really like his garment I wouldn't I probably wouldn't stitch the font or the the background I just him but I really liked him the next one the next magazine that I have the pleasure of owning is the just cross stitch magazine I could literally every single page in here I could show you and say how much I love it seriously this one has the all the cute stuff I this I marked this sampler this was actually a sampler st stitched by a little boy which are pretty uncommon and rare and so I really liked and appreciated this sampler so I think that would be really fun to stitch this one has a Priscilla Blaine hands-on design Kathy Haberman it's got the stars and stripes. Love it. Patriotic stitching. And it's got flamingos. It's got, it has all of the things. And the camping. Oh my goodness. It, I could just sit here and do flip flus of magazines. Oh my goodness. All right. Last week I showed you that I had finished one of the Carriage House Samplings uh, series and I stitched Love. Well, I have honor also in the collection and I really like the little bowl of fruit and then so I that's on my list to stitch what I really like about carriage house samplings these little ones and I believe Teresa kitten stitcher she did hers on silk gauze and it's like <laughs> adorable adorable I did mine on a 28 count R&R &R uh, reproductions linen and I think I'll stitch mine uh, another one maybe on 32 count and maybe I'll like gradually get them the smaller smaller counts and it'll look like the nesting dolls <laughs> anywho I really liked this bent creek pattern this one is a little sampler of luck and I liked the font I love fonts 
Oh, I, out of order. This is my other Carriage House Samplings, The Hope to stitch. I don't know if I'll do Hope or Honor first. This one is Sisters and Best Friends, Summer Joy. And I think of all the, the bee skeps and all of you wonderful stitchers who raise bees, Beth Twist, uh, Flannel Jammies Farm, Jen Stitching Niche, all of, uh, who stitch bees, if not own have bees and apiaries. I have a newfound appreciation for the cross stitch bees. And look at this cute little sampler. Summer Joy and it's 59 stitches wide by 115 stitches high and it was stitched on C Cafe Kona Linen by r, r Reproductions and I just reading the fabrics I'm going I, I need to get me some of that I need to get me some of that <laughs> all right and then my last oh my gosh I still have more <laughs> Okay, here's the Faith by Carriage House. The sampler of Briar Rabbit. Look at that cute little rabbit. And I love the border with the flowers. Oh! And then my last one is very quintessential Thanksgiving, if you celebrate Thanksgiving. I love it and it's got the pumpkin and it's not a cornucopia of fruit but it's a you know nice cluster of fruit feast of friendship I mean it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving to enjoy friends and a feast I love food <laughs> all right that's those are some of my goodies that I have in my two stitch pile Oh, I, I got a book and I was laughing, not laughing, I was just tickled pink. I really enjoy the Night Owl Stitcher and her dough bowl and I have really got turned on to dough bowls and I got this book for a friend because knitting is something that is completely magical to me. I it's so magical. Anywho, I, I got this as a Christmas present for a French, right? And it's Swedish knits. And I was looking through it because, hello, gorgeous. I might not know how to do it, but I know how to appreciate it, right? And I was cracking up. This isn't a dough bowl. It's a porridge bowl. Hashtag show me your porridge bowl. Oh, wait, that's way too long. That's like a sentence, not a hashtag. Never mind. Anywho, look at this. This porridge bowl is amazing. I mean, I had no, and then I, you know, peas in the pot, peas in the bowl, peas, uh, porridge pot, nine days old, and made me think of all the, the folklore around porridge bowls and porridge and the history of food in America. Anyway, but I just, I, I'm starting to appreciate containers and receptacles and how we hold things, how we store things. Watching the Midwestern uh, Cross Stitch Retreat recap of Farm Girls Retreat, everyone's showing the beautiful shaker baskets and the the farmhouse baskets and boxes and oh, just all these gorgeous containers. And I started thinking about some of the stuff that I have around the house. I think I showed you my fake banana aluminum dough bowl and, and then I thought about this other fun little container that I had I'm, I'm gonna grab it here I got this container four or five years ago and I really liked it for its folk art quality and that's why I purchased it I got it in an antique store and I thought it was really I thought it was really fun as a naive 20 something I did not realize that this was a tobacco holder, holder um, tobacco, paraphernalia, all, all of the things, right? So it immediately, once I learned that, it gave me that like negative connotation of, well, I can't endorse smoking. I can't have this in my house. So I had put it away, but I still liked it, right? So I'm reading this book 
from the library. And it is Women and the Material Culture of Needlework and Textiles. Um, and it's an anthology and it's from 1750 to 1950. And it's one of the library books I checked out. And I it, it covers a lot of different needle art, not just cross-stitch. And I was reading the essay on bobbin lace in Puerto Rico. Excuse me, I didn't if I didn't say that. Port, Puerto Rico. I, I'm reading this essay. And it talked about how bobbin lace was made using kind of recycled scraps and different things, um, using the French technique and the French and Portuguese influence of lace making, but incorporating found objects using coffee sticks uh, and bamboo to create the bobbins, using orange thorns in place of straight pins if they didn't have straight pins to do the bobbin lace, and using making the patterns using the tobacco advertising cardboard or the tobacco boxes and it got me thinking about two pieces of artwork that I got that um, they came out of Wisconsin. Uh, I, I, I inherited these pieces and I'm going to show you because I love nautical stuff. I, I have this print here and on the back of it is an advertisement for tobacco. So this old print mounted with the tobacco and then I have a second print and it also has the advertisement for the, the cutting of tobacco. So in Puerto Rico, many of these crafts, these artists were using that exact type of advertisement cardboard for the pattern making for their lace. I mean, the history, we're all connected. So I pulled this out, I'm like really sick, like I really don't feel well. And I had pulled this out and I started putting my orts in here. I had like a little pieces of thread like dangling here. I had uh, my scissors in here and it, it turned out to be the perfect little tray. And then I started going on eBay, which, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. And I started looking up tobacco trays and tobacco paraphernalia. And they had these amazing mid-century modern, like, floor stands that had all the tobacco and the smoking stuff. And I'm literally looking at it going, okay, I don't smoke, but look, oh, we could put your orts here, your scissors could go there, your, and <laughs> incorporating kind of a, the negative connotation of tobacco into something positive and current and incorporating our history not only in our physical stitches but in the tools that we utilize to stitch right anywho I hope that makes sense sometimes I feel like I I go off on these tangents anywho thank you for listening uh the history that again this book one of the library books women of the material culture of needlework and textiles and it's again a collection of essays and i'll i'll say the book down below well since we're on library books maybe i should tell you my other one i i picked up the historical needlework of pennsylvania and this is i haven't i haven't gone through a whole lot of it uh but the stitching it's all in black and white which is great. I'm not complaining. Uh, this is an 1802 sampler marked Dolly. And it was made the Lady of Lancaster embroidered in silk on linen using buttonhole, petite point, and flat stitches. So it's not a cross stitch book, but a needlework book nonetheless. And then, <laughs> oh, we should go into Save the Stitches, right? I know a lot of y'all like my Save the Stitches. I got this piece and I was cracking up about it. It is made, actually, it's a fabric panel by Hallmark. Hallmark. And I didn't even know they made fabric panels. But look at this witch. And it's it's one of those panels you cut out and it makes the, like, the, you, like, attach it around like a hoop. And it's like a wind, a wind thing in the fire cauldron. And I, hello, I love it. Witchy stitching. As you can see, I haven't made it yet, but it's got it's got the directions and the fabric panel. 
So I was really excited to get that piece. I got, I feel like I'm like the lady that loves doilies. I like, feel like I like have this magnet where like doilies like, like come to me. Anyway, I got, I got some really awesome doilies. I love them. Look at that stitching. I love them. So I got two of the exact same one. And then I got this really fun one. I think it's a pot holder. And I love the violet yellow color scheme. Hello, adorbs. So I'm at the checkout, about to buy my doilies. And in the free bin for kids, yeah, there's free bins for kids. I'm like, I, my inner child was like, yay! And I made a donation. <laughs> And they, and I got these, uh, bookmarks and I got happy birthday and I got, this is on perforated paper, bless you with the quintessential 1990 teddy bear, but they had to come home with me. I didn't want them to get ruined. And then when I went to the used bookstore last month, the really cool thing about the used bookstore that I like to go to is that they actually you can buy bookmarks so at the used bookstore people bring in their books to sell or to donate or what have you and many of the books actually have the owner the previous owners like they have the bookmarks in them so they have this amazing collection of ephemera of like old postcards pictures hand drawings uh, just really awesome things. And they have this literally like tub or porridge bowl, hashtag show me your porridge bowl, of bookmarks that you can sift through. And like the doilies where they're like, come to me and they're like attached, you know, all over. I like from across the way, I'm like, that's cross stitch. I see cross stitch. And sure enough, there is a bookmark. It's dirty. That's cool. It's fine. Uh, a bookmark that I got. I paid 95 cents for that bookmark. Well worth it. I'm very excited about it. Show me your bookmarks. <laughs> All right. My next Save the Stitches is the quintessential 1970s Hummel. Under the Rain. I actually had this music box when I was little. And it sat and it, they rotated with the umbrella. I got this piece happy about this piece it's cute I mean it had to come home with me it's not really my style anymore but I just cannot let this stuff get thrown away and that's I I'm presumptuous to assume that nobody else would have purchased this but it, it came home with me nonetheless and then <laughs> I got this piece last week before getting sick I got this piece and I'm not sure the building, it's not dated uh, where, who created this or where it was made, but it's got the horse and buggy, the Amish. So I assume this might be in Pennsylvania, but you can totally correct me if you know the designer. I love it though. And then this last piece I got last month. And again, it's one of those, I saw the frame and went, I love the frame. I want the frame. Give me the frame. And then I see, you know, this. I'm like, ooh, it looks like it's stitching. And it is. Da, 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 da. Now, you can still see the where the hoop was. It's not stretched. As you can see, it's got like, it's like wonky woo. And it's on sticky board. It's mounted on sticky board and it pops right out. And again, love the frame. I feel like this needs to be converted into a pillow or something else. Tell me below what we should do with this. <laughs> Anywho, that's my save the stitches this week. So we talked about library books, tobacco. I never thought I'd be talking about tobacco. Oh, they also said with the the bobbin lacing in Puerto Rico, they stuffed the, they uh, used dro old drawers or old like fruit bins and stuff and they stuffed it with wood shavings. Hello, Teresa and stuffing stuff with wood shavings, right? 
and banana leaves. I think that's so awesome. Now, I'm not advocating that we stuff our stuff with banana leaves, but I really like the idea of using the resources available and sustainable stuff. So, anywho, banana leaves, banana pants. Ba -ba 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 oh, speaking of banana pants, giveaway! All right! Ah, congratulations! You win! The banana pants yellow and the pretty orange. So exciting. And the little embellishment. Now, add this on like a scissor fob or add it to your finishing. You don't have to put it directly on the pattern. Okay? And here is banana pants pretty. Love it. And I'm working. I'm working on the next in this small and sweet sampler series. And I cannot wait to show you. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, uh, for our next giveaway is let's do coffee. Now, I know a lot of you don't drink coffee or overseas you drink tea. I love tea. I'm an equal opportunity hot beverage enthusiast. Love me some hot beverages. Now that it's getting cold up here in North America in my neck of the woods on uh, the mid-Atlantic, uh, I love decaf coffee. I love caffeinated coffee. I pretty much haven't met a coffee that I didn't like, except sugar-free stuff. I can't have aspartame, but that's a whole nother thing. Anywho, uh, I love coffee. Tell me below something dealing with coffee. Don't say giveaway. You know, you know, you know how it goes. Tell me your favorite hot beverage. If you don't like coffee, if you'd like to win this please don't say giveaway. You know, you know the deal. All right. My last little bit of business before we wrap up is just to say thank all of you for being so patient with me. My notebook that you've all asked me about, the stitching notebook where you can track your inventory and your stitching, it's on its way, my proof copy, but I wanted to show you like a little sneak peek of it, okay? What held me up last month, uh, September, not October, but held me up September was the cover art and what I wanted to do for my cover. Well, I got over myself. I got the cover art done. I, I drew it. It's done. It's out in the universe. And I love it. I hope you all love the cover of it too. But I couldn't just have an inventory notebook. I had to have more than that. I wanted to show you how to use the inventory notebook. Well, how do I do that? Well, I have to include a pattern, don't I? Yeah, I do. I need to include a pattern to show you how to use all of the facets of the notebook and how to organize it. So what did I do? I made a sampler out of fonts, out of fancy fonts, because I love fonts. I feel like I'm yelling at you. I'm so, I'm so excited. I what a great time to be alive. I mean, make all the things. So here we go. I changed the name. It's no longer artist sampler. It's fancy font sampler. But, oh, is that exciting? This pattern is going to be in the notebook along with another pattern. So you're gonna get two patterns and 100 pages, 100 pages to write about your projects, 100 pages. The total book count, it's like 113 pages plus extra. So it comes out to like 115 pages and I am thrilled and I'm excited and I'm hoping that if not next floss tube, like two floss tubes from now, I can debut it, but again, if you like fonts as much as me, there we go. There's like a little peek. I'm so excited. And yes, the notebook will be in a giveaway in a couple weeks. So just, you know, stay tuned. I suck at surprises. I just had to show you. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in this week. Congratulations to my giveaway winner. Please just know how much I appreciate you and that you matter. The stitching that you do is awesome and you matter. And hey, I love you.
Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week and I'll see you next Wednesday.